Welcome to the Poisoner's Cabinet. I'm Sinead. And I'm Nick. And this is your weekly podcast exploring the lives of the great poisoners and macabre murders from across the centuries and creating curious cocktails inspired by the tales that we tell. And it's episode 117. Oh. Oh. I'm still not getting excited by numbers. No, you can't tempt me. No matter how big my numbers no go. No matter how big your numbers get. Well, let's move on for the numbers rapidly. Rapidly. To the point at hand. How are you, Nick? I'm very well. Oh, good. Had some wine. It's been a lovely summer evening. Oh, we've had a nice evening, we haven't we? We sat in the garden. We had a glass catching up. And now we're recording an episode. It's entirely delightful. Isn't life wonderful? Yes. <laughs> Except for the nine hours of work before that. Often, you know, we come to these recordings and we're all business. We settle down and we're like, nope, come on, we've got to get on with it. Today, well, we took a leisurely... Took our time. Took a leisurely time Absolutely. with a glass of wine in the garden. Some business that we needed to be caught up with. Big business. All the business. So much business going Oh, we on. are business people. We have suits and briefcases. It's very impressive. Somewhere. The size of my briefcase. <laughs> How big is your briefcase? It's huge. So many papers. Yes. The bottle of wine that we've had before this episode so it is not going to affect the performance whatsoever, not people. in the slightest. No, it is just lubricant for our brains. The most important <laughs> where thing... Where are you putting the wine? It's like straight in your ear. Do you really want to hear where I'm putting the wine, Nick? <laughs> I mean, every time your head turned. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Well, any poisonings this week, Nick? Uh, the, the person who made the paint that I painted my room with. Okay, I'm glad you explained that because yes, if it was just... the person who made the paint. End of sentence. That sounds like the start of a really weird horror novella. <laughs> the person who made the paint. Yeah. But Nick has painted his dining room where we record the episode every week. It is beautiful. It it's is lovely. a lovely yellow, gorgeous feature wall that he's done against it's some of the artwork he has. Together. So this woman, so it was in, in the DIY place getting <laughs> getting him a paint. It's like, try this paint. It's really good paint. It's really, really good. It's really cheap. It's on offer. Buy this paint. It's great. Like, you need like half a coat and it's done. B- lies <laughs> five bloody coats of paint you're a perfectionist though nick there is that and this is a very very nice yellow color <laughs> it's a very nice wall <laughs> well done well done on your wall no, no, no. the yellow that you've painted your wall i mean yellow's unforgiving you know it's got to be really well, really goldeny beautiful she oversold the paint i feel <laughs> but yes you are a perfectionist as a set designer you're the sort of person where i'd look at a coat going it's fine and you'd be like not Good enough. Not good enough. Do it again. I have worked with Nick where I have painted five more times. I have had to paint the stage black and I've gone, there it is. And he went, do it again. This is true. I have actually. But it's black, Nick. Not Not good enough. It's not black enough. I want it black like your soul. So yeah. So she, she can fuck off. Um, But apart from that, everyone's fine. You bought the same paint. I'm, I'm regretting that now. Yeah. I haven't used it yet, have you? To be honest, I'll be fine with it, Nick. It'll drive you mad every time you use that bathroom when you come round. That's very true. You yeah. won't care. Oh, I crap. won't care. And then <gasps> then you'll end up repainting it. And then quid's in me. Woo! Well, I'm bugging up that, haven't I? <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of being overcharged for paint and your friends torturing you with bad paint jobs, I think it is time for us to thank our delicious new Patreon subscribers. Yes, indeed. We have two new lovely Patreons uh, this week. I have to say thank you very much to Rowena Caldwell. And also to possibly the best named Patreon we have ever had, and likely ever to have in the future, um, to the marvellous, the beautiful, the wonderful, the Chartreuse Fairy. Boo! No, we love you. I don't know who you are, but you have a small part of my heart. We love you very, very much. Thank you so much, you beautiful Patreon subscribers. For this episode, we're also going to do an extra shout out. Some of you know that we have a new tier called Cyanide Connoisseurs, which gives all the subscribers the access to everything that's already on patreon but also gives a new monthly episode that features a what the fuck look at the news and um, strange stories from the past which will be coming out very soon also early access to videos exclusive content and a very very special premium care package but so many people have signed up to it and we wanted to give a shout out to the existing subscribers but who have also pledged this month so thank you to chris matlick to vicky newton ren bridges daisy Emily McKee, Jessica Somerville, Ashley Fisher, Claire Hossack, Casey Kempf, Slanty, Manna, Kaya Johnson, Christina Pastana, Bastille Quinn, Amy Galga, Maria Frias, Dorothy Trujillo, Sarah Rennie, Nicola, Tara Ashley McAvoy, Emma I Am Swedish Honestly, Jones, Look at Me, I'm Stephanie D., K.D. Anderson, Paige Striebig, Jamie Curry, and Susanna Mass. 
Thank you so much, you beautiful cyanide connoisseurs. Thank you very much. Some of those names have been with us from the very, very beginning of the Poisonous Cabinet. Thank you very much for sticking with us and, yeah, for continuing to support our crazy shenanigans. It's always a joy to chat to our Patreon subscribers over on the channel. We do get to have a lot more in-depth chats with you guys and we love it. So thank you so much for your support. Well, Nick, are you ready? I'm ready for that fly to go away. Yeah, there is a fly fly. in the room, people. There's a fly buzzing around the place. It was quiet when we started. Mm. Then it decided to explode into the room in a very, very like us way, going, I'm here, acknowledge me. He's also bouncing into the window trying to get out. (laughs) Well, Mm. are you and the fly ready? Yeah, well, I'm ready. I know about the fly. Drink cocktails and talk about poison? Yes. Or, don't tell the fly, (laughs) we could drink poison, wink, and talk about cocktails. (laughs) Fly, fly poison, you say? No, no, fly poison. No, 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 not at all. Not, 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 not fly poison. Maybe we need some fly paper. We, maybe we need some arsenic. <laughs> arsenic alarm. Arsenic alarm for the fly. Should we go with the first one? Yeah, why not? Let's Start go. with the cocktails and see what happens. See what happens. Wonderful. Well, it is Nick's story this week. Hooray, hooray, hooray. But we can't, we can't, we can't possibly have a story without a cocktail in hand. As you know, dear listeners, every week we choose a secret ingredient that is inspired by the tale that we tell. And it will flavor our cocktail of the week Nick's story this week so his pick and Nick the secret ingredient this week is is uh, so shiny so shiny and lovely oh some lovely gold gold, gold. are we rich beyond our wildest dreams no no not in the slightest we've not <laughs> managed the gold rush not just yet we've not gone to California <laughs> and found our fortune Nick one day What's this about I that we're know. doing? I don't know what's going on there. I don't know what, why we'd be doing these characters doing the gold rush in the, what, 1800s in America. I, don't know. I, I, I think we would have done all right. I'm not sure we would have done. No, I would have died from snake bite. Yeah, exactly. I getting have, off I, a boat. Yeah, I wouldn't have made it to California, to be honest. <laughs> I would have gone, oh, that's a very long way. You would survive. You have weird survival instincts. Oh, I don't know. If you had to, if you'd made the decision that you're going to go, you're going to you're going to survive by any means necessary. You'd be building shelters, you'd be painting them gold, <laughs> <laughs> be hanging Com- up some lovely pictures. Exactly, go complaining that- there's not enough coats of blood to cover the place. Yeah, well, you'd be dragging me by the leg, going, "Come on, you're the only one who talks to me because I'm weird." <laughs> Very possibly. <laughs> gold. Okay, so gold in money, gold in colour. Well, you'll, you'll find out, won't you? Oh, oh is it not? As we, te- we tell a story, Ooh. you'll find out. Okay, well, what have you come up with then? Well, for, the, for this week's cocktail, we're having a golden dawn. Oh, how lovely. Delightful. 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 Yes. Peaceful, beautiful nature. Yeah, indeed. Now, unfortunately, I mean, I, I was very much excited when I found this cocktail. Oh. the name, to me, evokes all sorts of witchy, occulty shenanigans. Big fan of that. Oh, because of the Victorian occult society? Exactly. We have the whole Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. Oy. Love a bit of that. Unfortunately, this story has got nothing to do with that whatsoever. Oh. Um, but I just thought, oh, that's a good name. Too good an opportunity to pass up. If you want to hear more about the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, you, there is a Patreon episode about <laughs> there it. There is a Patreon episode. Uh, or you can just knock on Nick's door. Yeah, just give me a call. We'll have a chat. It's great. <laughs> he doesn't like Love talking it. to people most of the time. If you knock no. on the door, that's the secret password. If you ever find Nick's house, yeah. just say that. Come, come have in. A chat. Come and have a chat about witchy shit. I'm all over that. Oh, Love it. We'll have a great time. Marvellous. I think then it is high time for us to sachet into the poisonous cabinet kitchen and shake up a storm. So we'll see you in a minute. We'll see you in a bit. And we're back. Hello. Oh, Nick. A golden dawn. Yes. It's so pretty. So pretty. Now, this is the prettiest drink we've had in a while. Yeah. It's <gasps> got a thing going on. It's 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 orange and then it descends into the red. Like a dawn, like a setting sun. I don't know which way around it is. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> very, very pretty. So I'm thinking the only way you get this kind of red from a drinky side is Campari. But I'm thinking because it's settled at the bottom, we've got some grenadine in You're there. You're absolutely correct. Yay, me. Well done, you. Yay, me. Okay, everything else, don't know. Everyone else. <laughs> don't know. Everyone else. The rest of it's orange. Orange juice, <laughs> maybe. Some sort of tequila sunrise we'll variant going out. on here. We'll find out. Okay, I'm excited to try this. Yeah. Okay. Well, wow. uh, let's dive in and see how it is. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, that's spirit forward. But, ooh, ooh, with oh, complexity. I wasn't expecting that. No, I wasn't expecting any of that. There's a lot that's just <laughs> happened there in my mouth. Mm. Oh, it, it had a really strong hit and then it sort of oh, mellowed yeah, into no. something 
floral and Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Ooh. Well, it's gone from really, really strong. The first sip I had, I was like, oh, this is going to be too much. And now I'm like, something like a summer's garden. Ooh. Oh, that's intriguing. I'm pleasantly surprised by that. I'm really surprised yeah. by that. That that's, should that, not make sense. That's really nice. That's really nice. It, how, did it, how does it start so spirit forward and then stop? <laughs> and just mellow out. It what just I'm stops. intrigued by, because I see, you're quite right, we do have some grenadine sitting at the bottom there. Now, obviously, grenadine will layer because it's so much heavier. So when we get to the bottom of this, we can have a, just a massive mouthful of grenadine. So I don't know if at some point a stirring is required. Well, I'm going to stir in a minute. Um, to, yeah. Otherwise, it is the last mouthful is just going to be pure grenadine, which will be quite sickly. Okay. But talk us through it first. So, well, give us a guess. Come on, give us a guess. Give us a guess. Orange juice. Absolutely right. There is some orange juice. Because I don't think you get this colour without a lot of okay. orange juice in there. Mm, nom, 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 nom. There's something floral in there. And there's there's a strong alcohol... I want to say a whiskey but maybe it's not a whiskey and then is it elderflower is in there there is no elderflower in there no I can confirm that there is no whiskey in there either I'll there's no that. whiskey there's okay no whiskey. what's in there so we have well, it's actually a base of gin oh really yeah of all the things there is more gin in there than in any other one ingredient ah. so we have gin okay we have calvados love it so we have a yeah so an apple brandy pretty mm. much calvados mm. um and then some apricot, some apricot liqueur, which I think is probably where God you're getting it. the the florally yes. sort of thing from. Fruity, florally, Fru- fruity, fruity, florally <laughs> sort of thing. Apricot. You know what? Um, Apples come from fruit. Shut up. <laughs> then some lem- uh, some orange juice. Yeah, and that's it. And then shake, shake, shaky. Pour with some grenadine, just sort of fluted at the bottom <laughs> to be lovely and golden dawny. So is it apricot liqueur or apricot brandy? It's apricot brandy. That means the more booze. I'm not sure. If it's great. I don't think it's great. No. It's, it's, it's not mind-blowing. No. It's a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Yes. And perfectly jolly for a one-off, something that looks really cool and is in like an imp- it looks impressive. I think this is better than a tequila sunrise because you know, a, tequila, that... a tequila sunrise is a bad use of tequila in my opinion. <laughs> but it is a terribly fun drink and yeah. it looks great. Well, that's the thing. I think generally you have to sort of split those sort of cocktails that look fun. Yes. Are not necessarily the best tasting ones. Well, as, really. we've, as we've said before, we've given a friend a blue drink and they went, no, it's blue. But yeah. we gave them the shark bite yeah. and they went, and that, oh, I my think God. that's probably the, the, what, the exception that proves the rule. That was a good, look good yeah. and also so taste good as well. Um, this one is quite intriguing because it's boozy. It's, yeah. it's strong. We're going to use our special receptacles, by which I mean our fingers. Yeah, I'm going to give it a, a swirl. We can't be bothered to get the big spoons out. Oh, we're swirling it. Oh, it's bloody. It's now, <laughs> it's now gone very, very red. But, oh, that's like a lovely blood orange colour yeah. now. No, I like all right, it. All right. so. so now we've stirred in the sugar. Let's see what happens. <laughs> I mean, that's just now overpower with sugar. <laughs> so. That's the bigger about sugar that's it it <laughs> makes everything bigger and worse <laughs> so yeah I, I preferred it without the stirring it's still fascinating that all the layers are in there you've got the grenadine just for looks when you put too much sugar in it ruins it, it does, and it yeah, doesn't absolutely. make it go overpowering and oh sweet like i don't know like a, like a sugary drink or like any of the sodas you're thinking of it just heightens every flavor to the point of being annoying <laughs> Well, I don't know if it—I don't know if it heightens them. It just sort of smothers them in a sort of big old blanket of. Ugh. But I'm still getting all of the strength of the of the flavors, just with a sweetness added on, yeah. which is so, just wrong. I, I much much yeah. preferred it unstirred. The last mouthful. If you're not careful, you're just going to be—it's going to be pure grenadine. Ooh, so, yeah, don't stir in your grenadine, don't people. Don't stir in your grenadine. Leave it to look, and then just leave the last sip unsipped. <laughs> <laughs> That feels like a, like a proverb. Yeah, absolutely. Something... I am a wise man on a mountain. Oh, that's the name of your autobiography. <laughs> so so we've ruined these drinks. We have actually ever just ruined that we drink. We have ruined those drinks. I'm still going to so, drink yeah. it. But, um, Are you still going to drink it? Probably. I'm not. Oh, no. Oh, no. Sinead's oh, really, really, really ruined turned, it. turned on that one. Everything that was complex and interesting at the start has, has become a been, horror story. Just been grenadined out of, grenaded out of it's all like things. It's like you were interesting and different and complex at the start and now it's just a toxic relationship that's what it, that's Ooh. what this is i mean that that's that's a harsh comparison no a... I'm, I'm giving this to you if you oh, want to wow. drink it mate no wow no that's... can't do it can't do that doesn't happen often where sinead refuses a beverage that 
<laughs> Bruh, that's petrol. That's I no. I, Sinead dislikes it much more than I do. <laughs> Never mix your grenadine in, people. Let it lie where it is. Well, there's a whole thing of Calvados out there, so just, you just have about that. Oh, I, no. I think, well, actually, it's not my episode. <laughs> exactly. So you go for it. You go for it. <laughs> well, with the Golden Dawns in hand, yours is still in hand. <laughs> yeah, thrown against my newly painted wall. <laughs> I would, I, no, I wouldn't, I would never do that. Nick, I would say a lot of terrible things to you. I would dob you into the cops. I would tell horrible things about you on the internet, but I would never throw a drink at your no, Because wall. you know that would be the end of our friendship. You fuck up my paintwork. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Everything else, it'd be like, no, oh, yeah, you're a terrible yeah, bitch. Yeah, fine, yeah, I deserved it, whatever. Yeah. Should we go for brunch? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. A mark on your paintwork. The wrath of Khan yeah, comes upon are, me. there are limits. <laughs> With the cocktails there. Is it time for a story, Nick? Moving on to jolly things like murder. Well, before the story, should we grab extra drinks just in case? Yeah, you're saying that. I'm. I was quite happy with that one. I think I might raid the cabinet. You, you're going for it, aren't you? So it's story time. Pleasure overload has happened here <laughs> because I've just discovered that Nick has pistachio liqueur in the cabinet. So very recently, it arrived in the cabinet two days ago. Can't cope with this. It's too good. Oh my God, that smells like heaven. And that smells it's, it's an awesome thing. like like love and the praise that your mother never gave you. <laughs> oh good God, that's good. It's so nice, isn't it? That is my new Baileys at Christmas. <laughs> you have to go to Italy to get that. Well, Nick has two cocktails in hand. I have some pistachio liqueur and we still have wine. The story is going to be good, people. <laughs> yes, indeed. So this week we are returning to the Old West. <laughs> For tales of cowboys and bandits and saloons and all manner of lawless shenanigans. This is the story of Boone Helm. Boone Helm? Boone Helm, the Kentucky cannibal. Ooh, cannibal, you say? Indeed. Boone was born on January the 28th, 1828 in Mm -hmm. Lincoln County, Kentucky. Now, he is from a very well-respected family, a hard-working, he is one of 12 siblings. And when he is a young lad, the family pack up and move to the neighbouring state of Missouri. Missouri, I know it very well. Kansas City, absolutely. Know it inside (laughs) out. I forgot about that, yeah. (laughs) Yep, absolutely no problems with Missouri there. Well, that's why they moved to Missouri. Now, at the time, Missouri is on the western frontier, pretty much of civilization. Beyond that is a, a vast expanse of sparsely inhabited wilderness, really, all the way until you reach the Pacific Ocean. And they are right there on the very edge. Now, in this frontier town, Boone becomes quite accustomed to the rowdy, rough-and-tumble sort of way of life that is that is common in these sort of isolated communities. But even by his early teens, he is found in the saloon more often than not. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he knows what he's about. And the cheap booze mixed with his already pretty fiery temperament resulted in him he, he enjoys starting fights pretty much for any reason he, he can think of and no reason at all sometimes just he, li- just he likes a good scrap now potentially it was due to his quite a large he's got a lot of siblings perhaps he feels some need to sort of prove himself as a as a, as a man or something like that i think that's giving um, him too much credit i think potentially some people just want to fuck shit up well yeah indeed and he decides that the best way to do anything is by starting a fight this is how he's going to prove how tough he is how manly he is he was wonderful in job interviews <laughs> now initially things don't go so well for the young boon he's still sort of in his early teens 13 14 year old and he's going up to 20 30 40 year old cowboys and picking a fight Mm. And he gets the shit beat out of him <laughs> for, <laughs> most of the time, really. He's and... walking up with a toothpick in his mouth, saying, like, "Yeah, it seems like you want to fight." Oh God, yeah. I wasn't anticipating yeah. an actual fight. Exactly. Now he is frequently left sort of bruised and bloodied on the floor, really. But rather than go, "Oh no, that's not quite perhaps the right approach," he decides that he's going to become tough. He's going to become the man who can beat the crap out of all these people. These humiliation of all these defeats only spur him on to to call out bigger and tougher opponents. And eventually he starts winning. He starts winning these fights. That's training in a way. Well, it is, absolutely. It is training and he learns how to take the punches. He learns how to give the punches. And yeah. The hard way. The the, the very, (laughs) very hard way, indeed. Now, eventually, by sort of his mid-teens, he's pretty much beaten up most of the locals for sport. It's something to do of a weekend, so (laughs) why why not? 
and he becomes interested in sort of feats of of strength and, and of daring do he very much thinks himself as he's a man's man um he's a slightly crazy alcoholic one but a man nonetheless <laughs> um, <laughs> he goes to great lengths to Im- sort of impress bystanders and local ladies with his riding and his knife skills sorry there's a minute there where i have to remember that riding is a different expression in yeah America. no no none of none of this <laughs> none of this Doesn't very use... <laughs> different meaning in ireland different meaning oh, i hadn't thought about that you ruined the whole story <laughs> I mean, that would be weird. Horse back riding. Right, good. I mean, if you did the other thing on the street, it, it's quite impressive. Oh, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe he, he probably went for it, to be honest. Like what you see, ladies? <laughs> his particular party trick is to throw his bowie knife into the ground Ooh. Um, and then gallop past at full speed okay. on, on his horse. And then le- he sort of leans over in his saddle and grabs his knife, going past at God knows what speed, picking his knife out of the ground. That's not fancy. I think it's pretty fancy. I used to do that in a golf cart when mm. my dad used to go golfing and he I used to lean off the golf cart and pick up golf balls at five miles an hour. I mean, it's basically the it's, same thing. It's pretty thing. much exactly the same sort of exactly. thing, really, isn't it? Exactly. Him yeah. leaning off a horse galloping at 60 miles an hour yeah. to pick up a knife in the ground. <laughs> It's much, it's much the same as a golf cart, really. But they, they seemed impressed. Uh, Sinead is obviously not impressed by this, but the, the spectators um, in the town in Missouri seem very impressed. And there is much applause and general hurrahing for, for Boone. There was much rejoicing. There was much, much rejoicing. Boy. Now his ego soon becomes so inflated that he, he now thinks he's pretty much untouchable. Um, so it comes as a bit of a shock to him that he to hear that the sheriff is on a mission to arrest him for, for all the fighting and for destroying random property um, <laughs> around town. And yeah, he is actually quite amazed that someone dares to come after him for these sort of infractions. <laughs> With a bill. Yeah. And... <laughs> now, sort of unsurprisingly, he's, he's slightly drunk. He's been in the saloon. He's slightly drunk when he hears this news. Aside from being saying being shocked, he's also outraged by this and decides he better go and take it up with the judge himself. Go, why have you sent this man after me? So he jumps on his horse. Okay. He rides straight to the courthouse. He rides into the courthouse. He rides up the stairs. He rides into the courtroom where the judge is there in session on some other judgy business. Um... (laughs) And from horseback in the quorum, he begins haranguing the judge, <laughs> yelling obscenities, demanding to know what right this man has to, <laughs> to send a sheriff out after him. <laughs> Please let the case that the judge was overseeing be some minor misdemeanor of, at the time, a man in the Old West putting up a porch and he wasn't supposed to put up a porch. <laughs> and he's there clutching his Bible. Jesus, this was not worth it. Take any fine you want. I, I do not know the specifics of the crime that were in trial at the time um, <laughs> horse then all manner of guards rush into the courtroom <laughs> and they wrestle boone off the back of the horse the and horse in, is arrested into a cell the horse is in the cell <laughs> next door it's fine <laughs> they've wanted that horse for years <laughs> absolutely <laughs> later that evening he is back in the saloon telling tales to anyone who would listen oh. about his exciting time in court how he escaped how he got out okay so this is bollocks then no no it's all true but is his, it? his father's money has greased many many palms oh. and he has been released scot-free he's still a young man oh his the foolishness of youth the father <laughs> says promising young man absolutely foolishness of youth here have some cash any damage, we'll pay for the damage. It's fine. <laughs> yes, yeah, a lot of horse prints. A on lot people. of horse prints. A lot of sh- horse shit all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole thing is quietly forgotten about. <laughs> and that pretty much sums up most of Boone's young life. Everything he does is papered over mm. by his family. Oh. They they they've got a bit of cash. They will splash the money around. But people get to pay off. They're quite happy to let things slide. Oh, interesting, interesting. Now, in his early 20s, Boone marries uh, a 17-year-old, Lucinda Brown, and the couple go on to have a daughter. Now, unfortunately, Boone, he doesn't leave his love of fighting at the door, and he becomes notorious around town for, for violently abusing his wife, Lucinda. Oh, Jesus. The, the, the couple, they argue constantly about his drunkenness, about his destructive behaviour. He's constantly knocking down nature 
neighbor's fences and destroying their outbuildings and all this sort of stuff because he's got a bit pissed. He's got a really <laughs> annoying tendency of riding his horse through the house. <laughs> <laughs> she's just swept and he's coming in back home from the pub on his fucking horse the neighbor's fences are one thing but the horse in the bedroom would you mind not bringing the horse to bed every night i'm sorry that i keep thinking it's a terraced house in london somehow i'm like how did he get the horse up the stairs it's a ranch it's a ranch Sinead. it's a big old house yeah the horse is fine the horse is confused horse, like, where do yeah. i live and uh, now eventually after only a year of marriage lucinda has had enough and i'm not she, surprised yeah, the constant and horse attacks. The cost and horse attacks. The cost and attacks from him. Um, and she petitions the court to grant her a divorce. Good for her. Um, and now Boone's father, he is also becoming increasingly frustrated and frightened by the route his son is taking. He actually pays for Lucinda's divorce. Oh. Boone's father, her father, pays for Lucinda's divorce so that she and her daughter could escape this n- his nutter of a son. Oh, really. go on then. Go on for him. Fair play. Yeah. Boone sees this divorce and his father's funding of it as a huge betrayal, a personal attack on him. But he is finally starting to get the idea that he's actually not that well liked around town. Not (laughs) that many people liked him, but mainly everyone is just terrified of him. Yeah. Um, And living in fear about when he is going to kick off next. Sorry, was his aim to be liked? Well, I think he thought it was all jolly japes. It was all hilariously funny. Um, everyone's on his side. He's yeah. yeah, he's doing his thing. But everyone, oh, it's just Boone. He's having a laugh. I'm just having, having a, a fight and I'm messing stuff up. Fucking exactly. narcissistic, abusive twat. Yeah, absolutely. So, but he's finally realizing that. Oh no, it's not all fun and games that I thought it was. People actually really hate me. Oh good, and he changes his ways? Uh, Not in the slightest. Not in the slightest. Boone doesn't really care about what people think. He's soon going to leave this little town. He's going to go off on his own adventures and he is going to make his mark on the world and be marvellous and wonderful and just be Boone. (laughs) Now, it is now 1848. Do you know what happens in 1848? It's the start of the Civil War. It's not the start of the Civil War. January 1848, gold has been discovered in California. Good. I'm glad you clarified that because I was going through a bunch of historic things (laughs) with no idea of the date. It is the start of the California gold rush. How was I supposed to know that as well? Don't don't set me up with that shit. You went all with the whole gold rush thing in the beginning with the cocktail. When was I supposed to know when the freaking gold rush started in America? Are you you quite finished? (laughs) (laughs) I I might have a little more, actually. I I, I can imagine you probably do. (laughs) People were all over the place. were making fortunes. In in just a few days, people were wandering through old creeks and picking up enough gold off the ground to set them up for life. It was all there for the taking. Boone certainly has the self-confidence to convince himself that he is perfect for the job. He has, of course, has all the necessary skills to make the the 1,700-kilometer trip across the country. He has Um, a horse. Yeah, he has a horse, but no, he's fine. He's absolutely fine. Say 1,700 kilometers across Missouri to California, not a bother at all. Uh, Through the Rocky Mountains, yeah, he can do that. Um, Make a name for himself as a gold miner, piece of piss. Good luck, Sam. To accompany on him on his trip. So it's a long way, needs some company on the way. Um, He decides to ask one of his cousins, a chap called Littlebury Shoot. (laughs) Littlebury Shoot. (laughs) And his name is Littlebury. His surname is Shoot. Was it, though? Well, that's what they say it was. <laughs> Little <laughs> so, Berry Shoot. Little Berry. Jim, his name was. <laughs> <laughs> Potentially, maybe this is a nickname. He has very small testicles. He- I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't and know. The, and the penis was the shoot. P- potentially. <laughs> so, it wasn't a good nickname if he made it for himself. It's not a good name. Well. But, but no, that's what he was known by. Also, very creative. If that is going to be your nickname, <laughs> that you have small penis and testicles. Little berry shoot, rather than just tiny balls and cock, mate. <laughs> Anyway, Littleberry. Anyway, Littleberry agrees to go with um, with Boone to get away from all the slander. Of the <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Potentially, he's he's only agreeing really out of fear for what Boone would do if he refused. <laughs> Boone has refused anything. He goes off on one. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, Littleberry does indeed reconsider. And he opts to stay in Missouri. But Boone does not take this change of heart well. When Littlebury tells him of his, his change, change of mind, he's going to stay home. Boone stabs him in Ugh. the chest, instantly killing him. 
Okay, extreme. Extreme, and most definitely an extreme reaction. Uh, but then he goes on his merry way and sets off for California by himself. Bloody hell. Now, now fortunately, the murder of Little Rushute does not go unnoticed in the community. And <laughs> <laughs> but no, now Little Brew, we never thought that there would be repercussions to our actions. But now, now he's dead and they feel bad about it. So mm. his relatives and his friends group together and they ride out to confront Boone about what he has done. And they catch up with him. And while Boone is standing, he's surrounded by the gang. He's screaming, he's going to take them all on. He'll, mm. he'll kill a lot of them. It's all fine. Someone manages to fling a rope and sort of lasso Boone before he can fight. Ooh, that's proper Red Dead Redemption. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they manage yeah. to they manage to, to restrain him before any violence ensues and they drag him back into town where he is flung into jail. <laughs> And now in jail, Boone's behaviour is so bad. So, so he is beating the crap out of any other inmates that are sharing his cell. There would be many all just chucked in there. And he's sitting on top of a big pile of unconscious people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm king in I'm here. King, I'm king in my cell. Um, and he is actually transferred to a mental asylum. Okay. He's going to sort of so violent. There must be something wrong with him. Um, and now this is supposedly for the safety of the other prisoners. And in fact, the guards at the jail, at the asylum, he fakes whatever symptoms he thought would get him the best treatment Mm. Um, and some of the guards take pity on him and they would occasionally take him on on some nice escorted walks through some nearby woods outside the compound go for a nice walk in nature all good for the soul Very it's soothing. all delightful and the hospital staff notice that boone always he's always seems so much happier so much more content after these after these excursions what's been going on well it's just a lovely walk in nature so then he comes back and he's a lot calmer and a lot nicer so yeah, so they what, decide what have those guys been doing out in the woods <laughs> so they they decide to sort of increase the frequency of these of these walks <laughs> Um, and after a few months of lovely walks in the woods, the number of guards starts to go down. Um, <laughs> Boone hasn't been any trouble. It doesn't take six guards to take one man for a walk in the woods. Then it was five guards. Then it's four guards. Then it's three guards. And then Boone sees his chance. Hmm. One day, a perfectly normal walk in the wood, Boone bludgeons one of the guards with a fallen branch and oh. legs it. He makes his escape. Oh. Now free, he once again sets his sights on California. The way to California, it is a long and hard journey. He has only got the clothes on his back since he's escaped from the asylum. Mm. His first task is to to find a horse and supplies. And not too far from the asylum, he finds a traveller who had camped down for the night. Boone snuck up and killed the man with his bare hands before making off with pretty much everything the man owned. Oh, Jesus. Now, on his way to California, I mean, it's a hell of a long way mm. to get to California. But he tries to avoid what towns and settlements there are, and he opts for the quieter and more out-of-the-way paths and, and mm. trails. But still, every now and again, he would come across a traveller, usually on their way to a better life, on their way to find their fortune, on their way to do something lovely. Now, invariably, these encounters don't go well for the other party, and eventually their bodies are discovered by other travellers. Finding these unfortunate victims dead along the side of the trail was, was of course, upsetting, but these are dangerous times. There are more (laughs) bandits than travellers, usually, (laughs) and if a man can't protect himself or his companions, then then really he has it coming. He's asking for trouble if he's not equipped to deal with the bandits that everyone knows are out there. Everyone's (laughs) approach to the lawlessness of the time was like, shit happens out on the trail. Stay in town, stay on big roads, and if you go out there, well, good luck to you because we're not going to investigate shit. Absolutely right. Now, however, there is one aspect that that does cause some some concern amongst reports that that come back. All the murdering. Well, no, apart from all the murdering, many of the bodies have parts missing what or have been stripped to flesh oh oh i've just remembered the title there we go there we go (laughs) oh bloody hell on some occasions it is clear that limbs have been roasted over an open fire and gnawed upon what attached to the body oh just no like a limb just like cut cut, cut off the arm they found the arm on an arm on a spit but it's clearly been cooked so they found the body, but they found the limb attached. At, the, separately. The, I'm trying to work out. He didn't drag the body over there and just put the arm over the fire. No, I think the arm has been removed from right. the body. And practical. Has, practical, practical. Yeah, absolutely. yes. Absolutely, yeah, indeed. They and didn't then, just find them and have one arm that was roasted and bound with rosemary and stuff like that. No, no, I think the arms were much separate at this oh. point. 
and then on a spit, tasty, 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 tasty. like a leg of lamb. Exactly, or an arm of lamb, <laughs> an arm of lamb, or a face of lamb. <laughs> oh God, oh, that's upsetting. <laughs> what? Face of lamb. <laughs> you might have. Well, you never know. And rumours start to spread as these sort of tales get back to the settlements. There is something or someone ungodly and terrible in these parts. Something <laughs> travelling and hunting along these trails. Oh, that's great mythology, isn't it? Of the time. Because <laughs> you can imagine, again, yeah. no way of knowing this backstory at this point. All you know is that people go out and parts of their limbs are torn off Absolutely. and eaten and cooked. The, the, less of a wild animal kind of... Yeah, exactly. This is clearly not a bear. <laughs> no, and and not so many mythological creatures will sit down and make a campfire to roast your flesh. Yeah, you never know. Possibly, but you never know. Sasquatch. So he well, he loves a roast. Mothman. <laughs> they all love roasts. They do love a roast. Who doesn't? <laughs> who doesn't love a roast? Mm. Over potatoes. Forget about it. <laughs> now, people who have in fact survived a meeting with, with Boone, perhaps they were in a in a party too large for for no. Boone to take on, or is it it was a fleeting encounter? But they always report tales of this this terrifyingly violent, angry man out in the wilderness. How they how often they feared for their lives mm. and then how soon the legend of the kentucky cannibal was born the man who ate only human flesh hey. they said because he probably ate other things as well but he did have a particular hankering for the human flesh well once you start now boone seems to relish in this sort of newfound status and when he does stop into town and he finds a saloon and he's had a few glasses of whiskey <laughs> he is happy to brag about this reputation yeah. um saying many's the poor devil i've killed at one time or another and the time has been that i've been obliged to feed on some of them <laughs> <laughs> it's like everyone in the pub going that's nice oh good <laughs> i didn't ask okay <laughs> I was having a nice game of cards here. <laughs> so, so happy like, birthday happy to birthday. me. <laughs> he does seem like the sort of person who just thrives on the controversy, Absolutely. any kind of notoriety that he has. <laughs> Ballsy. You've got to kind of admire it in a way. Like, I've eaten people. I've eaten and people. And killed them. And so, what are you going to do about it? Well, again, I mean, it's it's every man for yourself back in that time. You walk into a saloon, it's like, don't fuck with me. Mm. I will kill you, then eat you. <laughs> That's a hell of a proposition. You're going to back away going, fair enough. Okay. You know? Yeah, no, we're good. Eventually, he does make it to California, um, <laughs> munching his way across <laughs> across, across America. Um, he created Death Valley. That was it. <laughs> he ate everything that everything was there. Everything inside. Before, it was a lovely, thriving metropolis. <laughs> Lush, beautiful, <laughs> resplendent with people and wildlife <laughs> no, all the... <laughs> just munched upon <laughs> and when he gets to california he starts working as a miner just hundreds of thousands of other people um, had done and now boone finds himself in the somewhat unusual position of not being the toughest fightiest drunkenest person in mm. in the area there are so many people who have crossed the country mm. suffering all manner of challenges and awful circumstances just to get there so you've got to be bloody tough yeah. the donner party is somewhere along the way going hello yeah. and and he's come from this town in missouri where he was the toughest biggest ass in this town he was there ah uh, big fish in a little pond exactly now he's now he's there going oh no oh no these people are bigger than me <laughs> <laughs> he gets the crap beat out of him because yeah. he is trying to take on these big grizzled tough miners yeah. who are twice his age three times his size and have got mates yeah. <laughs> and he is not doing not doing well and he is almost killed on several occasions the yeah. fights he he gets himself into that he cannot handle but eventually he he gangs up with a, a group of sort of like-minded ruffians a lot of small fish in big ponds who are yeah. ended up there and they sort of they gang themselves together um, and in this this gang they they do indeed cause chaos they start fights that they can win because there's just a group of them yeah um so they can take on the bigger top dogs and they seem crazy as well so and which, absolutely which gives you an edge it certainly does in a fight and they smash up hotels and bars and lodging houses and <laughs> there was no need <laughs> there's no need but no they're in they're in a bar they're in a hotel or whatever and they, they just they've had their one sherry and they go well okay we better smash this place up better. so everyone knows we're hard well yeah absolutely he ends up a wanted man 
yeah. um, for, for killing many of the men um, who he does fight with. And eventually he has to leave California to escape prosecution. Boone, along with his five of his outlaw companions, they escape north into the mountains of Oregon yes. and Idaho. So still chasing the, the gold trail? Well, so, so still chasing, well, out of California to get away from the sort of the, the, yeah. the law there. But absolutely, still following the mountains, trying following the mm. sort of minerals and yeah. trying to make make some money for themselves. So, so indeed, in 1853, he's in Oregon where he does indeed spend more time in the mountains trying to find not necessarily gold, but other yeah. minerals and other yeah. precious things in the mountains. And while there, he unsurprisingly gets into various fights with locals, locals who usually end up dead. And he very quickly outstays his welcome there. Quickly move on to the next place. And then they get in more fights there and they, they kill a few people there and they move on to the next place. And then so it goes. The group intend to make their way to Fort Hall, where they will travel south again down to Salt Lake City in Utah. Nice. Now, the route they were going to take takes them through the foothills of the Rocky Mountains, pretty much following the line Yay. of the Rocky Mountains down, but winter is setting in. Oh, no. It is not a good time to travel through the mountains. Now, all six of them, they're on horseback, and they are, they're pretty well provisioned, but they are forced to move incredibly slowly mm. through this really tough mountain terrain. Mm. And the journey takes them a hell of a lot longer than they think it's going to. And their their rations eventually start to run out. When the rations run out, they have to kill and eat the horses to survive. Just as they think things can't get any worse, they are attacked by a, a group of indigenous Americans. And they are forced further back into the mountains. Oh, God. Um, forcing them to spend even more time in the cold and the wilderness, with mm. now with pretty much no rations at all. Four out of the six men in the party died in the freezing temperatures. And the remaining two, Boone uh, and another <laughs> chap named Burton, they hungrily eat their companions. Yes. They have to do what they need to do to survive. I can imagine Burton thinking we must do what we have to we to have survive to. oh it's so difficult <laughs> boone is just expertly filleting <laughs> the bodies going yeah. would you would you like the rump or would you like the flank steak mm. i i've obviously never done this before mm. oh no what do i do yes medium rare eventually the winter does begin to recede and they begin to approach fort hall their target but as so often the case the last stretch is always the hardest Ooh. and burton he's snow blind he's frostbitten he is so weak that he can hardly walk. He falls behind. Boone leaves him and continues to the fort, only to find the fort abandoned and empty. No oh. stores, nothing in sight. Boone leaves Fort Hall. He, he goes back into the mountains to try and reconnect with Burton, who he thinks he might be still be where he left him. Or, or to eat him. Oh, well, as he is approaching where he had abandoned, abandoned him, Boone hears a gunshot. When he discovers Burton, he finds that Burton has in fact shot himself yeah. rather than succumb to starvation or any of the Exposure. wild animals or anything that are in, in the area. Boone thinks, well, it's not one, not all no. that. It's all very good. Boone begins carving up Burton. And that evening will be a grand feast. But knowing there was still a long trek ahead of him, Boone wraps up one of Burton's legs and packs it up for a nice snack. Something to nibble on exactly. on, on the journey. It's easy to nibble on a Absolutely. leg. Absolutely. Over the shoulder. Oh, nice and Just rare. like that. Mum, mum, mum. <laughs> <laughs> just as you as you go get some sustenance going just a little toe every now yeah, and then absolutely we don't really know what he does where he goes next what he does next but somewhere on the border of idaho he makes the acquaintance of john powell now john powell is a seemingly incredibly nice man he he nurses boone back to health and helps him trek through the rest of idaho and brings him to the town surrounding salt lake city in utah potentially john powell was a very religious person he was heading to Salt Lake, mm. um, after all, and perhaps he thought it was his duty to help a traveller in need. But whatever his reasons, Boone is more than happy to fleece John for everything he can. Um, John ends up paying food, clothes, a new horse for Boone, provisions, without a, pretty much a single word of thanks at all for supplying he's an idiot or the, well there potentially is that as well <laughs> now i imagine he's especially annoyed when he discovers that boone has been carrying over 1400 dollars worth of gold wow. with him it's an absolute fortune really yeah. that he has sort of secreted about himself on his travels um, mm -hmm. and he's been carrying this since from california mm -hmm. where he is sort of robbed of various people that he's he's beaten and killed it turns out that salt lake city is not for boone 
at all. All these religious goings on is not really the vibe of the Boons um, <laughs> after. And yet again, he sets off for California for the third time. After getting into more scrapes on his journey down to the gold fields, he is taken in yet again by another good Samaritan who feeds, clothes, and howls this disheveled and desperate looking man. Though this time, rather than just leaving without a word of thanks or any, or any coins, um, he takes his ingratitude considerably further and stabs the good samaritan while he slept boone would later say that he had no good reason to commit the crime other than for his own enjoyment something to do of a morning now realizing it's not gonna be wise to stick around really he's just stabbed this man who's obviously (laughs) a a popular well-liked man um he moves north this time going through san francisco and back into oregon in the 1860s he's in florence oregon where eventually he ends up a wanted man for killing five people but one of his victims was an unnamed man known as dutch fred dutch fred dutch fred he met fred in a saloon and the two had hardly exchanged any words before boone aimed his pistol and fired the first shot missed but as fred stood to react and draw his own weapon the boon took better aim fired again and killed fred outright oh good god now no one knew what had brought about this this fight so they had only just met that evening they had barely said two words to each other he had never done anything to offend Boone. His insistent wearing of clogs. <laughs> Pot- potentially. Oh, such a racket when he's walking around the place. Clippity clop too <laughs> much, my friend. Clippity cloppiness. It is later suspected that Boone had killed him on someone else's behalf oh. in exchange for some cash. Oh, now he's a bounty potentially. hunter. Yeah. So, yeah. Ah. Obviously, Dutch Fred had done something to annoy someone else. Dutch. And Boone was merely the, the tool used to take the revenge. He is forced to leave Florence, and in 1862, he flees further north, this time into British Columbia, which at the time is still British. Now, these these latest travels, again, can coincide with the arrival of winter. And yet again, he bands with a small group of travellers going north. There is safety in numbers and all, and snacks in numbers as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> and by the time they emerge from the mountain trails, Boone is the only one left. He's behind them, just like sharpening <laughs> a knife. Okay. <laughs> Oh, what? So you can catch some elk? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Let's yeah. go with that. You stand closer to me. You have the biggest rump. <laughs> In British Columbia, he takes on odd jobs, apparently killing for money mm. this time. Mercenary Going down the hire. mercenary for hire route. Absolutely. Or sometimes it's just for fun when he's had a drink. You know, sure enough. You've got to get your jollies in somewhere. And he is eventually chased out by the British authorities. Now, why they don't arrest him, uh, who knows? But they <laughs> just go, well, we don't mind you killing an eating of one. Just do it over there. Across the border, just go over there. Yeah, just like uh, nudge <laughs> Just do it to the there. Americans. It's fine. <laughs> yes, that would solve a lot of problems yeah, for us. So just go over if there and could. do it. Yeah. He arrives back in Oregon, but here he is a wanted man. And he is quickly arrested for the murder of Dutch Fred. <sighs> He is taken back to Florence and put on trial. Now, realising he can't fight his way out of this one, but he actually reaches out to his family for help. They'd always helped him in the past, and apparently they have been keeping keeping tabs on Boone, really, and they seem to know where he is. Or just reading the paper. Well, potentially, yeah, but his older brother, um, <laughs> known only as Old Tex, Old Tex. Old Tex. Old te- uh, He's probably pissed off with that title. Okay, I, my father's still alive. <laughs> Come on, can but, uh, I be youngish, Tex? Old Tex comes to the rescue, say just like his father had um, when they were teenagers. Old Tex spent a fortune bribing witnesses and officials in Florence. What's what's, what's going on there? And when the time came for Boone to stand trial, the prosecution have nothing. Not a single person in that saloon saw anything. Mm. (laughs) That's... They yeah, that's had, disturbing. They are forced to let Boone go free. There is no one who is willing to testify that Boone did anything. How rich are the family? Sorry. Well, how, not, how? well apparently they've, they've certainly got enough money to do this. They don't seem to be particularly rich. Ranchers, farmers. But they've got enough um, to pay off people pay off a whole to whole shut up yep. about the horrific crimes that he's committed and all these allegations. Yeah. I don't know. It seems a bit dodgy. It seems no. a bit like they did drugs. 
<laughs> maybe, maybe so. They yeah. were ranchers growing heroin. They're, they're doing something right because they got yeah, as you say, they've got enough money yeah. that they can they can bribe city mm. officials and witnesses to turn a blind a eye to whole front. to a cold bloody murder. But but soon enough after this, Boone is is forgotten about. There are other murderers, other killers on the front pages of papers. Now Boone follows old Tex back to Texas surprisingly where old Texas is from but despite all that his brother has done from him boone can't stop what he's doing he's got it in his head even on the way to texas it is reported that he has killed three men in various brawls <laughs> on the way eventually when they get to texas he again causes chaos chaos that seems to follow him wherever he goes he starts fights he is thieving he is destroying anything he can get his hands on old tex is a respected member of the community mm. and his brother is ruining everything he has built up eventually tex gives boone a lump of cash and just says just go here is your inheritance here is just some money just get out we we just i don't want to see you again mm. um leave texas and do not come back Boone takes the slump sum and absolutely goes. He again seems forever drawn towards California and he heads north yet again. He doesn't need to kill to survive. He's got a nice big pile of cash behind him now. He could quite easily buy what he needs, get any transport or any supplies, but it, he just simply enjoys it. And anyone he meets on the trail is fair game. Eventually he hooks up with a notorious outlaw, a chap called Henry Plummer. Now Henry is a fascinating chap in his own right, and there way may well be a future episode on him in the future <laughs> um he is a, a sheriff turned outlaw who gathered like-minded hoodlums to him to to cause mayhem they take over towns running them as their own private kingdom pretty much in 1863 boone and a group of outlaws that he is with are ambushed by a a vigilante mob um, locals who are tired of living in fear of these gangs and these bandits that surround them. Now, this time, there there is no escape. He is going to face Wild West justice. <laughs> now, there is no courtroom in sight. Boone is furious. He's furious that he's been captured by ordinary people. <laughs> Rather than gods <laughs> these came people came down are, These Olympus. people are below him. Not even a local sheriff, but by ordinary people. He, he, he says that if he seen a sheriff approach he would have been able to fight back but the, these people had snuck up in plain clothes and they had tricked him oh. how very dishonest and dishonorable of these people in what was to eventually pass for a trial boone said if i had guessed what you're all up to you would never have taken me <laughs> um boone went on to claim that he never killed anyone in his life the judge and jurors made him kiss the bible and swear on it which he did without any hesitation but though why they bothered who knows as everyone just laughed at him when he did it everyone there knew about the kentucky cannibal mm -hmm. he was a man with with no moral compass whatsoever Boone tried to point the blame at well, all of his fellow gang members. Mm. Uh, one in particular, three-fingered Jack Gallagher, um, <laughs> <laughs> which is an excellent cowboy name. Three-fingered Jack Gallagher. He also yeah. sounds useless in a fight. <laughs> yeah, well, can you pull a trigger with... Well, probably depends which three... It depends, it depends which three fingers you've got for pulling a trigger. Or stab someone or punch someone. Or deal cards. <laughs> it depends what his particular yeah. you know, niche was. Yeah, absolutely. But apparently it's all his fault everything everything boone had done was in fact him mm. and he boone goes on to list all the crimes that mm. jack gallagher had committed they were boons they're all his crimes but now he is dumping them squarely at the feet of three-fingered jack others standing trial argue back furious that boone will bet would betray them um swearing that they will kill him if they should ever escape which is perhaps not, not the best thing to say in court but the vigilante they have already made up their mind about what is going to happen none of the gang are going to get away this time and they are all sentenced to hang on the 14th of january 1864 all five men are marched to the gallows to be executed in front of a crowd of around 6,000 people now before reaching the gallows boone asks for a last glass of whiskey saying i have looked at death in all forms and i am not afraid to die jack gallagher and boone helm are the last to die that day now as boone watches jack struggle at the end of the rope boone calls out kick away old fellow my turn next i'll be in hell with you in a minute whoa uh, <laughs> at that he jumps off the platform oh, he jumps. snapping his neck before it can be kicked away from under his feet that is the end of boone helm the kentucky cannibal the kentucky cannibal da, da, 
Da! And gold was the ingredient there, just because they went looking for gold. They were looking for gold, and he had a lot of gold, <laughs> and he was obsessed with the gold rush. <laughs> gold, 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 gold. He also it liked was, to nibble on it limbs. Was, well, it was going to be legs. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was so nearly legs, and I thought that could be interesting. Uh, uh, I think we could use that again, actually. Limbs <laughs> limbs comes up a lot in this show. This like Gold, true. I'll give you that, I'll give you that. Most kind. Oh, wow. What a... What a what a fucker <laughs> <laughs> that's one way of putting it absolutely yeah yeah just one of those it's a really good story about figures from the old west who are just blasé about oh, what they're doing absolutely no nope, I don't really give a shit I'm not trying to justify this as that I'm doing good and I'm also not trying to justify it as in like oh I'm an outlaw trying to fight against a man or whatever going nope like eating people yep. nope I'll have a nibble if I can <laughs> and you're in my way and you gave me food and shelter wonderful I'll stab you I'll in the face stab you in the face yeah <laughs> got a taste for it now I know oh maybe is, do we do we buy into the cannibal madness once you've tasted of the flesh well, I, I mean, I, mean I, I sort of slightly get it if you're in that desperate situation it's All that right. or death then I can vaguely see that it's going to it's going to work. You have to do it. Yeah, we've spoken of this before. Yeah, yeah. but then just go on and go. Well, I've got some cash. I could go to that their mm. bar and buy some lovely food. But mm. oh my god, you look tasty. <laughs> <laughs> um, is that's where I, I slightly get like <laughs> it's a whole new meaning to pick up. So I mean, yeah. <laughs> desperate situations, you may have to make difficult decisions. Yeah. Like as we've referenced before, Alexander Pierce was a much Absolutely. more troubling case for you. <laughs> But it does seem like he's just an opportunist. Oh, yeah. A mercenary uh, and an opportunist. He is just going out going, okay, fair enough. I'm going to have to trek the wilderness. I'll kill this person. That's food. Maybe it's just this little switch in his head is that I'm doing everything right. If you if you cross me, I'm going to kill you. And also your fair game, quite mm. literally. Yeah. Clearly no emotion figures in there. Not, not in the slightest, absolutely. Oh, it was and a wild time. <laughs> it most certainly was a wild and lawless time. Yeah. It's a crazy time. And every time I read these stories, I go, I, f- I forget what a crazy time it was. <laughs> the old whistle just bleak. Oh, yeah, it's bleak and harsh absolutely it's bleak and it's harsh and there's very little that's romantic or cutesy or that you'd kind of want to tap into all you see is just death and destruction yeah so people just killed each other relentlessly yeah just Just all the time relentlessly (laughs) and they didn't have a good time and then they walked for days and days and days and then they killed some more people (laughs) and then they might have gotten gold but they got no gold (laughs) gold. no one got gold Uh, it's a lot (laughs) (laughs) seems stressful i don't think i would have done well you would not have done well in that situation as i said you either would have been the mastermind behind a massive gang or you would have just been at the dock in in New York fanning yourself going where am I walking petunias <laughs> I'm, I'm walking petunias me and my veranda having a great time <laughs> I need another mint julep well what do you think people what do you think of the story of Boone Helm another tale from the old west a lawless godless terrible terrible time but one that is fascinating mm. really <laughs> what do you know of this era of history are there more stories that we could cover are there little bits and pieces that you particularly find fascinating that you'd love us to talk about what do you think of Boone do you think he was just a man making his way or was he <laughs> crazy crazy I'm going for the crazy was he crazy making his way or was he making his way and then he became crazy <sighs> what came first what came first? Was it the chicken or the egg? Because he ate both of those. Tell us what you think. Jump on the comments of any of the social media channels that you follow us on. And please do follow us on social media. It really, really helps the show and it engages us with you. Make sure that you're following us on Patreon. Message us at any point if you would like to give us tips on more stories that we can cover, more ways that we can interact with you. But also, vaguely importantly, (laughs) mix yourself up a golden dawn. But just don't stir it. Don't stir it. Don't stir. Or just, to be honest, the grenadine looks lovely, very impressive, ruins the flavour. Yeah. Have it without. Yes. And just drink the lot. Or yeah. just have it and look pretty, but just don't drink the rest of it. So we shall put out the recipe on Friday. With or without grenadine, it's up to you. Hmm. It's a very nice drink without. With it, it does indeed ruin it. I haven't finished mine or Tanade's cocktail. So yeah. I lied at the beginning when I said I was going <laughs> to knock them back because I didn't. Let us know what you think. It's an interesting one. It's a cute party drink, but you'd probably be better off with a tequila sunrise, to be honest. Tag us in the photos. Give us your interpretation of more sunrisey, (laughs) sunsetty, just sun-based 
drinks and anything with gold in it and keep spreading the word about the poisonous cabinet thank you thank you thank you to everyone who has left reviews lately please keep those coming we so appreciate them and we appreciate you endlessly thanks for listening guys we have been the people inside the poisonous cabinet we will see you next week and remember your loved ones are trying to kill you oh.